Hey everybody, welcome to episode 4 of the Northern Fusion Cast, where we talk about digital media. I'm Cody, this is Connor. Hello. And this is what we've been up to this week. I I haven't really done much, I've been just playing a lot of Call of Duty, preparing myself for this new map called Fortune's Keep. It's a little bigger than Rebirth and smaller than the major maps, so I'm kind of excited. Is it Battle Royale? Yeah, it's, it's, it's for Warzone, yeah, the Battle Royale. Okay. So I'm a little, a little excited. It's going to be interesting. Some people are already getting mad because just like when they changed the maps in normal Warzone, people got really mad. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'll, we'll see. It's going to happen next week. But uh, that's all I've been doing this week and following news about video games. So pretty pretty tame. All right. So what have you been up to, dude? Watching anything oh. lately? Uh, so lately... This past week, I uh, played through all of The Last of Us Part Two, and I gotta say, the ending was pretty horrendous. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with The Last of Us, if anything at all, but... I, I saw a few playthroughs, but I haven't seen the ending. So, you know Joel dies, right? Uh, near the beginning, right? Yeah. And then halfway through the game, you're forced to play as Abby, who killed him. So that was that was pretty odd, but eventually I got used to it. Like I didn't get super upset with her like most players did who boycotted the game and whatnot. But I don't know. It was a different experience. Definitely not as good as the first game, but it was still fairly enjoyable overall. So and, how's the how's the mechanics? Um it's definitely improved from the first game. Uh you can tell they definitely improved with the AI and combat mechanics like you can go prone now so that adds for a bit more stealth to the game i suppose and wasn't this game turn... supposed to have a multiplayer uh yeah they are currently still working on the multiplayer which is scheduled to come out hopefully by 2023 whether or not that's ah. actually going to be the case i i don't know wow wow that's when did, I... when did this game come out 2019 uh i think so yeah Wow, that's a that's a long time for multiplayer to come out. Right, so I don't know why they're focusing their time on making The Last of Us Remastered again for PS5 when they could be focusing all their efforts on multiplayer. Ah, uh, yes, the remaster. So what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Because, uh, well, I still have yet to play through like an entire Last of Us game, but graphics-wise it looks cool, but I, I kind of think of it's, I kind of think it's uh, stupid. A little ripoff. It is, and the fact that there's no multiplayer for the remake, they're just making it standalone, removing the multiplayer. I think that's really dumb, and there's no need for another remaster or remake. It already looked fine with the PS4 version. Yeah, seems like Last of Us joined uh, GTA in terms of releases and Skyrim. It's right? on multiple consoles now. Well, three gens, right? Mm-hmm, but at least with Part 5, they're, um, the PlayStation 5 version, they're actually remaking all the models so that they fit the PS5. Did you see some of the models? They look pretty I good. Did. Yeah, they look a lot like the uh, Part 2 versions, like in terms of updated graphics and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, uh, will this be a purchase for you or a pass? Uh, I still gotta get my hands on a PlayStation Five, but if well, I when that, you do get your when you do get your yeah. hands on one, <laughs> if I get my hands on a PS Five, then probably I, I would like to play through the game again and see how it looks. So I have the PS Four version, and I think I'm okay with that. I don't need the uh, PS Five version because I've yet to play through it yet, anyways. Right. And... You're uh, you're missing out, dude. You need to get that played. So you say, so you say. So we didn't talk about this last time, but uh, you have some interest in Pokemon, right? I, I have more so interest in the older games rather than the newer ones. Like, if they remake games like Black and White 2, I would for sure play those. Like, But, I but just, I know, like, Black Sword and like, Shield has, like, the best story in Pokemon. It does. The Black and White games are really good, but I don't know. I just don't like the whole open-world things of the new games. I would prefer remakes of the old ones before I get my hands on any of the new games. You sound like a Gen 1-er. 
Uh, I'm a Gen Fiver. <laughs> no, because I don't know. I guess it's like mixed because a lot of people do want you know a more open Pokemon game. Right. And then a lot of people also want the older Pokemon games. Mm-hmm. I, I'm in. I'm in the neutral party. I'm okay with both, to be honest. So did you see? The, so you you saw the trailer, right? Yeah, I, I kind of skimmed through it. It looks alright. <laughs> what do you think of the starters? Uh, they look pretty cool. Not as cool as um, the Sun and Moon ones. Those are probably my favorite looking ones ever. Mhm. So I, I like those ones too. One of them even got even got to become a Smash character. Right? How lucky is that? I mean, to be fair, one of these guys might be a Smash character in a future Smash game. Mhm. I think out of all of them, my favorite is the duck for now. Because it looks like he's wearing one of those uh, uh, hats. Mm-hmm. Uh, they come up with some pretty crazy ideas for these starters. Like, for um, Sun and Moon, it was an owl. But now we're working our way up here, and just... They get weirder by the game. But cooler, too, I guess. Uh-huh. Is the... So, I'm... I don't... Is it... <laughs> Is that dude supposed to be like a like a croc or some kind of lizard, the fire one? I I I don't know. I don't I don't know what Nintendo's going for with these guys half the time. I just go with it. Cause I already well, cause every Pokemon is basically you know based off real life Pokemon, and some of them are not real life Pokemon, real, real life, life Pokemon. animals, <laughs> real life animals, and um, and the others are based off mythology. Mm-hmm. I, I, mean, I don't know. They just they look really weird to me at times. Come on. Well, at least you got to like Lechonk, right? Uh, who's that? What, what game was that introduced in? <laughs> Lechonk is a new Pokemon. Uh, I I don't know any about anything about the new Pokemon. Yeah, I'll show you a picture. It's basically a pic. <laughs> Lechonk. Oh, that's wow. That's a little mean calling him Lechonk because he's chunky. I think it's just like a basic descriptor. It's kind of like how Wulu was just just called that because it was a sheep. <laughs> All right. I'll take your word for it, but that's a fake. Hey, look, it's not a lechonk. <laughs> lechonk, a fan favorite apparently in the memes that I've been seeing. All right. Um, I'm I'm kind of uh. I'm kind of on the fence of this because I do have Legends Arceus and it's looking to be similar to that. I have yet to play it too. So after I play I, it, maybe 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 I'll be way more excited for this or maybe I'll hate it. Who knows? I feel like with you, you're just going to end up not playing Arceus, but you're still going to buy these two games and you're going to end up not playing them either. <laughs> it's because I haven't decided what I'm going to do with Arceus, if it's going to be a personal playthrough or whatnot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Perhaps you'll... Do 100% run of it. Perhaps. So what do you think of the Legendaries? Oh, they look really cool, I thought. So, uh, I think it's pretty obvious that their necks are basically look like tires. <laughs> uh, what do you mean tires? Like car tires? Well, kind of like tires. Like, it's 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 weird. Their, their necks look like tires, but um, I'm pretty sure you can see that the what their differences are, right? One is like old school and the other one's futuristic all right personally i'm a fan of the the futuristic one it looks really cool to me uh, i i'm gonna have to see them like in game before i decide i can't just judge them off the little snippets we've seen gotta see the actual <laughs> powers we see the trailer and then turns out their special moves are like the worst legendary special moves of all time right I'm just gonna drift around. Actually, that would be cool. That having a Pokemon drift around you. I, they look to me like birds with different animal bodies. Really, they look like lizards to me. L- lizard birds. I mean, they could be dinosaurs, which are basically lizard birds. <laughs> Perhaps, or maybe they're like lizard squirrels or something. Lizard squirrels. Indeed. You know, that that's what we need. That's what we need. A legendary Pokemon that's a squirrel. I would use it. Especially since I mean, appar- apparently they're letting people use legendaries in competitive now. That seems a little cheap, but alright. 
Yeah, it's weird. I was watching the, um, um, crap, what, what was it? It was some kind of a tournament going on in Canada for, for, uh, you know, before the world champion thing they do every year. Mm-hmm. And some of those dudes were using legendaries, and I was like, when was, is, is this allowed? Because whenever you use, like, tried to participate in, like, tournaments online, they usually ban those, right? All right. So it was, it was weird. And I wasn't the only one. A lot of people on, like, in, uh, like, YouTube chat or Twitch stream chat were, were like, is that allowed? <laughs> So what do you get if you win those tournaments? Do they give you money or something? I I don't, I assume. At least maybe the world... <laughs> maybe we should look it up. Hold on. Pokemon tournaments. Oh, wait. You know what? We'll do the main one first. World Championships. Uh, reward? More than 500,000 in prizes. Wow. Damn, that's that. Just first place. For first place is twenty. First place is twenty five thousand. Oh, that's for TCG, but I don't. I don't know what game. It looks to be similar, actually. Still, that's a lot. Twenty five thousand. Damn. Mm -hmm. I. I mean, co compared to like uh, Call of Duty League or uh, League of Legends and stuff like that, pretty small fries, but still, that's a lot. Like, who supplies the, the money to these people, though? Like, these Pokemon tournaments? Is it Nintendo, or who does it? I think it's I think it's the Pokemon company. Okay. Because, um, well, they're pretty... They have a lot of money, those dudes. And we, I think at this point, we know that, po that Pokemon games make up a small percentage of it now, because merchandise makes up the other percentages. Right. It's all about that merchandise. If you see a little Pikachu on a sticker, I guarantee you that probably made them a lot of money. Mm-hmm. 50 million bucks. Mm -hmm. Worth a lot. So I am probably am going to cop these either a day of or like a week or two after. Not pre-ordering them? <laughs> I don't know about you. Because <laughs> well, you're always on the fence when it comes to these ones. Yeah, I've lost interest in Pokemon over the years. I think the last main games that I was really excited about, like really excited, was Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But other than that, they just they're too boring to me now. Just got to work on a storyline. But the the reason why I'm still sticking around is because I like uh, I like the battle system now. I mean, it's kind of old school, but I like the battle system now. You know, turn based. They're getting kind of cheap with the battles now, though. Like, looking at Pokemon Black and White 2, there were so many options, like triple battles, double battles, rotation battles, and now they remove all that stuff. They're just going more basic crap. I actually miss those. You reminded me how they took out triple battles. Mm -hmm. They stopped it in X and Y, right? Or was it uh, Omega Sun and Omega uh, Alpha Ruby? Oh, wait. I think I'm getting my games mixed up. <laughs> Omega Ruby um, and Alpha Sapphire? Yes. Isn't that um, where they stopped the triple battles? I think so. Either that or X and Y, perhaps. But I think it's because not enough not enough people used it, but surprisingly a lot of people actually liked it, even if they didn't use it as much. They're just taking steps backward. It's like YouTube removing the uh, feature that you can't look at the oldest and newest videos anymore. They just keep removing useful things from everything, and just... You know, sucks. you know sucks too they introduced that mechanic but there wasn't enough of it in the game right there's only like a f couple battles in the game you can actually do with that right like if they made if they had way more people um like NBC trainers doing that i'm pretty sure get a lot a lot of people more interested and aware of it mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's going through their brains clearly nothing intelligent the me oh the mechanic i miss the most though like dynamax is cool i, I, I want mix back Megas were way, Megas, way better. Yes, Megas were amazing. Level up your Pokemon. I know in X and Y, once you got Lucario, you, you were set the entire game. You didn't need any other Pokemon. You could just keep using his Mega Evolution, and you were set. Best part about Megas, too, you can only use them once per battle. So uh, so if it dies, it, it becomes more fair anyway, so it's cool. All right. I forgot I just how Dynamax works, <laughs> but... um. 
Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll revisit that because I still have to do the DLC. I just want to know the in-universe explanation for why all this stuff keeps disappearing, like why everything's downgrading, why there's no more national decks. Like, is the well, Pokemon universe getting like less supplies, so they can't make national decks anymore, or what? Who knows? Maybe we'll get um, a teenage-rated Pokemon game in the future because they are aware of their uh, older fan base and what they want. Did you know that? I don't think they are, since we haven't gotten a national deck in forever. Well, no, I mean, like, not in that sense, but they're aware that people want a more, you know, mature game, but they don't they don't really want to do it right now. They should just go back to how Black and White and Black and White 2 were. Those were, like, the perfect level of maturity. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was pretty, pretty dark in its own way. <laughs> mm-hmm. With Anne and... Whatever the gets huge us. Name is. Yeah, it gets us. That whole abusive father thing. Mm-hmm. Just, they need to go back to that. That was probably... Black and White and Black and White 2. Well, Black and White 2 are my favorite Pokemon games ever. Because that actually had a national deck in it. I think that was, like, the first... No, that, that was the second Pokemon game that I ever, like, fully invested in, like, leveling up my Pokemons, um, learning EVs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the Pokemon World Tournament was awesome because you could fight trainers from previous generations. Oh, and Black and White too. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. And the memory link uh, thing was awesome. Being able to link your uh, Black and White copies to Black and White too, and you get those little flashbacks, and you could see your house from the yeah. first game. Yeah. I miss that. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I wish Pokemon would redo. Who knows? Maybe they'll bring some bullcrap back in these ones. All right, I mean, to me, Black and White and Black and White 2 was like the prime. Then after um, probably Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, it just started going downhill. Hmm. Probably. I like the scope Sword and Shield were going for, but I do feel like it was missing some stuff. Mm hmm. It seems uh, then, half But a game. lot of people, a lot of people liked Legends Arceus. I haven't played that, so I can't really say anything about it i know i still have to play through it too and i'll maybe another time i'll give my thoughts on that i just <sighs> feel like the people that like sword and shield are like year I, I don't associate with them because you consider me a boomer but i would say your generation zoomers are the ones that like sword and shield more as the uh not, older uh, fans have started not really pitching. um it's mainly older fans that are keeping sword and shield alive Really? It's it's not because of like the exploration mechanics of it, it's more because of the battle system. Most people uh, are using using it for its battle system. Uh, perhaps. I don't know. It just seems like a lot of the younger generation likes it. I mean it helps. <laughs> it helps a lot. Um, Any more thoughts on Pokemon? Or should, could we should we move on? I think we should move on. Yeah, we'll, we'll revisit this another time. Perhaps in like 50 episodes. So, speaking of interesting creatures, did you watch the new Jurassic World? I did. I thought it was great, even though a lot of people hated it. I think it's a mixture of both, because I'm seeing people who love it and some people hate it. Personally, I loved it. Like, I know it's not... It's not for everyone. It's not a like, oh, it's 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 not this incredible picture show that that's totally gonna get like a an amazing Oscar, an amazing um, performance and all that crap. Like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. There's dinosaurs and 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 I get to see my old, my uh, old actors that I watched in the first one. Right. See, I don't watch them for the dinosaurs. I just watch them to see all the old actors again. That was like the coolest thing ever. It was like an end game, end game level crossover. <laughs> Look, how, I'm Connor. I'm gonna watch a dinosaur movie, but I'm not there for the dinosaurs. I'm there for the actors. Listen, that's a valid reason as much as watching for dinosaurs. I mean, I, sure, I guess I, I like I like the actors too. So, uh, the opening movie was. A little shaky, but I, I liked it. Getting introduced to Baloo's little kid. Right. Uh, I don't understand still... the sudden hostility towards uh, Owen. I think, it, I think that's his name. I think it's I think it's just how uh, mother animals are. Uh, this this cat that we had, 
was very mean towards me once it had his kittens. <laughs> so I can kind of see it. Uh, besides, besides, blue is based on um, has a Komodo dragon DNA, doesn't doesn't she? So maybe you you know more about this stuff dinosaur wise than I do. Perhaps, but she has uh, Komodo dragon DNA, so it probably makes sense. She's super aggressive. I mean, that's how she had a kid to begin with. It wasn't like it was through asexual production, I guess, right? Yeah. I just. I don't know, I wish they showed more of Blue throughout the movie, not just two little scenes. Yeah, it was it was Blue, and then it was mainly about, uh, I forgot that girl's name, <laughs> but I know she was uh, the, she was the little kid, she was the clone kid that they, that, uh, Owen and, uh, Claire saved in the Fallen Kingdom. Uh, we'll, we'll just call her Anonymous Girl for now. Uh, we'll just call her, uh, British Accent Girl. Yeah. yeah, British anonymous accent girl. So this movie was it did have dinosaurs, but I think it's pretty obvious what type of movie this was. It was basically a, a rescue your kid type movie. I thought it was a children's comedy. <laughs> oh yeah, totally, totally children's comedy. Like that guy getting eaten, bitten in half. Oh yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's what they want. Oh, so during the motorcycle chase, apparently, um, the person who got eaten by one of the dinosaurs won a contest, and he filmed that from his home. They just gave him a green screen. And Are you kidding OBS me? I didn't even know it. about that. Yeah, that, that would be so. Contest, that'd be so cool. Eaten. You know, you know all these, all these, all this crap I'm hearing now because uh, um, even in Jurassic World, you know, like the the one that came out 2015, mm -hmm. they had a crap ton of of extras there. Do you know that just just for that uh theme park experience. So you want to just have a scene there of you getting eaten by a dinosaur? Bruh, I'm pretty sure you would fanboy hard if you were able to be an extra and get eaten by a zombie in Walking Dead. Dude, I probably would. I'd probably be like super happy if I got shot in the head by Rick Grimes or something. Dude, just 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 being in a scene getting murked by your by your favorite thing would be awesome. Or being in a bathroom fight against Tom Cruise. Okay, now that's a little strange right there, but sure. <laughs> like the one in Fallout, Mission Impossible. Just get Bruh. shrecked. But that guy wasn't really an extra. He was he was actually uh, an important character. <laughs> Perhaps. Anyways, anyways, we're getting off track. Um, oh, so the marketing for this was was awesome, by the way. Like they released a a little, little um, I think it was seven minute long video on YouTube a year ago, where it was about a uh, this little camp and then an Allosaurus attacks. Uh, so for me, the only things I saw related to this movie, promotional-wise, was just, I think I saw, like, the main trailer, and then, like, the, like, opening week one or whatever, I don't know. You didn't see the prologue either? Because there's, like, two different videos that came out. There was the Allosaurus attack on the camp, like, you know, campers are camping there and the Allosaurus comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And then the other one where, this was after Fallen Kingdom, but the other one was, uh, prologue, which is basically following a Rex you know, 66 million years ago. Yeah, I didn't see either of those. Yeah, the Rex gets murked by the Giga the first time. And, um, yeah, those are pretty cool prologues. And then the, the other marketing was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if you saw this on YouTube or TikTok, but they were doing a lot of... I think we talked... I talked about this in a previous episode of the podcast. But they were doing promotions on TikTok and YouTube where there's people doing, like reporting scenes or they saw a dinosaur this way and stuff like that oh yeah i haven't seen any of those there's even a website called uh, i think it's dino tracker where it just has pictures of uh people uh fans who uploaded pictures of people you know seeing around dinosaurs okay that's pretty interesting so that was cool it was real i really liked the marketing did for this i think and then that's what oh well back to the movie i guess uh i liked it throughout the entire thing like even though it was focusing most mostly on the rescue the child storyline i, I mm -hmm. liked everything about it this this movie a yeah, lot of callbacks a lot of easter eggs mm -hmm. um and a lot of cool moments like you like of course they have to make the main character seem badass but th those moments are pretty cool All right. 
Um, I like that they gave everyone a fair amount of screen time. Like, it didn't feel like it was focused on Claire and Owen. Like, everyone got their own screen time. Like, Alan and Allie and Malcolm, everyone got their own fair share of screen time. Didn't feel like it was mm -hmm. really focused on Owen and Claire at all, this one. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. It, it was it was awesome. I like how they pulled back uh, um, the guy who, who was the second raptor tamer in the first Jurassic World. As a CIA guy, <laughs> of course he almost got shrek. Uh, he was the he was the dude. Um, he was the dude with the accent. Right? Do you remember the one who got chased by the raptors and was stuck in a boat? Oh yeah. Yeah, they pulled him back from the first one. He was a raptor tamer with Owen. Huh. I didn't know that. Well, that's why there was that scene where um, they're standing in front of a cage and he tells them. Uh, Shit, I don't remember the exact words, but it was something something along the lines of, uh, "Do you remember how we got the raptors in the cage before?" Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and then he dodge rolls and tricks the that one raptor. And those raptors looked weird, by the way. <laughs> Maybe some uh, new CGI editors. Yeah, but in lore wise, I, th I think it's because they're super mutated. So. How much do you know about dinosaurs? Like, do you study dinosaurs in your fair, or, uh, spare time? Dinosaurs? <laughs> um, I wouldn't call myself an expert. I would call myself an enthusiast, I guess. But I do, I do like to look up new stuff that comes out. Like, uh, cause I, um, real life lore, real well, real life lore, real life uh, dinosaurs are you know are clearly way different than the movies because the movies are supposed to be monstery right so i do look up two separate things um real life dinosaur stuff because that those things are interesting did you know the did you know rexes actually didn't roar they made like a weird humming sound mm. like mm. like um imagine playing like a really loud thing on a speaker and you're like it's like you can feel it in your body like throughout you know reverberating in your chest or something yeah it, it'd be like that and it's like two miles away and you can still feel it like that that little hum that buzzing feeling wouldn't you be terrified uh i would just hope that i have like a shotgun and if he tries to eat me i just shoot him in the eye and go straight to the brain and kills him speaking of which going off topic here would a gun even work on a dinosaur? Don't they have like super thick? Uh, oh, I think I would assume they're like elephants, right? You need like a a big bullet, or just shoot them through the eye. I can't imagine their eyes are very thick. Yeah, it'd have to be a good shot to shoot for the eye, man. Perhaps, but a knife would probably do the trick too. Oh, what you're gonna go Torok on it on his ass? Yeah, well, if I'm on his back, what are they gonna do? They have the shortest arms in the world. They can't get me. You're talking about a nine-ton beast who could probably shake itself and you'll fly off. Uh, he'd probably be too dumb to do that. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, some animals are smart, but they're not the brightest. I mean, even some humans are not the brightest, but still. I think maybe the average, like, little farmer Joe could take care of a dinosaur if he had a knife and was sitting on his back. Just climb up to his head, stab him in the eye, make it push the knife all the way through, and... Bam! Dinosaur down. Fresh meat. I wonder how dinosaur meat tastes. I, I, I don't know. Maybe like chicken? I don't know. Well, they are. Well, they are descendants, so probably. You know, yeah. if we ever, if we ever get to the point where we're cloning dinosaurs, let's not make a park. Let's let's eat them. All right. I would never want a dinosaur park because then that's Jurassic World is actually going to happen. Well, that and, uh, well, with our own food problems already, I think that would be even worse if we have to feed big dinos. Right. I think I'll stick with animatronics. Yep. Or VR. Yeah. So what do you know about real dinosaurs compared to the, the ones in the movie? Uh, I know that they're big. Some of them. So That's about it. So the raptors in Jurassic Park are based off Velociraptor, but you know just scaled up because real Velociraptors are tiny. So do they actually do their research with the movies, like try and get them to look how they, how we think they looked. Well, apparently they have. Um, 
they have uh, paleontologist experts on each movie. Okay. But just but paleontology is just like every other science where you know new information comes out all the time, so things right. change. Mm -hmm. So, so oh, the you know the weird part is um, after the whole Velociraptor thing, because you know the the ones that they're based on are like super tiny. Uh huh. Uh, they ended up finding bigger raptors, and they they're called Utah raptors or dinosaurs, something like that. They're like they're like uh, they're way bigger than the ones in the movies too. <laughs> You know, you should just start your own like dinosaur YouTube channel. Just Cody reviews dinosaurs. It would probably be I've, entertaining. I thought about it. I thought about it, but there's already a lot of dinosaur YouTubers. But you could be a unique one. You're Canadian. Uh -huh. It'll just be me fanboying the entire time. Yeah. Hey guys, I found this really cool Velociraptor own. It's so cool. Maybe. Maybe. I do want to play a few more dinosaur games first before I do anything like that. Um, but yeah. Oh, and the Rex has actually perfect vision compared to the movie. Okay. Like, scary perfect. Like, they have hawk eyes. Like, you know, hawk eyes, but way bigger. So could they defeat Hawkeye? Probably. MCU Hawkeye? Maybe not, because he has, like, those Ant-Man arrow bullshit. Yeah, that's true. Just fire one of those as a dinosaur. They should do a crossover. MCU versus Jurassic. Bruh. Anyways, we got it completely off topic. Back to the, the, the movie. <laughs> mm hmm Um So the uh the, the exposition part where they're doing the black market thing was pretty cool, you know, because dinosaurs are spreading throughout the entire world now. Yeah. Selling them in little secret areas. Yeah. I'm surprised there's so many dinosaurs too. Like I, I'm pretty sure they're breeding them, but there was like only a few that survived Fallen Kingdom, and already there's like so many. I I just I want to know if all the dinosaurs are hostile because that's the way the movie made it seem. Like a majority of them are. So I just wish we got to see further. Like if there's more nice dinosaurs. Oh, like herbivore. Yeah, there's probably a lot of nice dinosaurs. Just that this is mostly a thriller, you know. Yeah. Um, well, to be honest, I'm pretty sure even the nice ones would be aggressive because they're in cages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the ones we saw. Yeah, we just gotta find a nice vegetarian dinosaur. You know, it's surprising. My favorite one in that movie, like, I, I, I like Rex and all that stuff, but my favorite dinosaur I saw in the movie was the feathered one that could swim. <laughs> what part was that, Ed? It was when they crashed the plane into the lake. Oh yeah, that one. I th oh, they didn't kill it though. She just tased it, right? Nope. Yeah, yeah. They t they didn't kill it. They just tased it, and they left it on top of the dam. But dude, that's. That... I wanted to see more dinosaur deaths. I, they show up with dinosaurs killing everyone. I want to see a dinosaur die for once. I mean, you saw a lot of dinosaurs die in Fallen Kingdom. Perhaps, but I wanted to see more dinosaurs die. Well, who knows? Maybe a lot did off screen. There was that giant fire that happened towards the end of the movie. That's true. All those weird um, locust things. That was terrifying. Yeah, yeah that that's a, that's a scary. Like, 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 bring. If we had to make a choice, bring back dinosaurs. Fuck the fuck the locusts. Like, if you bring, if anyone ever decides to bring back like a giant uh, bug of any type, you can go to hell. I'll right. find you and I'll put you in a hole. I would. I'd rather have either of them back because dinosaurs are huge and would probably want to eat us. Maybe. Oh yeah, so this 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 Triceratops over here who primarily eats primarily eats plants wants to eat me. Yeah, he probably does. He saw that your name is Cody, so he decided he wants to eat you. What the Cody plant? Is that what they remember from their days sixty six million years ago? Yes, the Cody plant. <laughs> hey guys, look over there. It's the Cody plant. All <laughs> right, dude. Bro, the, the Triceratops has a surfer accent. Yeah. The, the Triceratops. The Triceratops. So the yep. main villain of this movie, by the way, very underwhelming. Uh, that's my. Yeah. That's my. That's my only complaint, to be honest. He was kind of a nerd. I'll admit that. 
He had a mess. I think I think they were going for like a messiah complex where he thinks he's a do he's a good guy or whatever. Yeah, like he he didn't seem that threatening at all. He tried to escape and ended up being eaten by whatever those dinosaurs were. Cause I don't know the the names of anything. You know that scene where he's trying to make himself look good when it comes to like using the locust to control the food food production in the world. Yeah, that was really that's a stupid way of trying to make yourself look good. That's all the writers could come up with, man. I mean, I guess I mean their primary focus was just on getting the kid back and showing cool ass dinosaur scenes. All right. Oh, uh. So what'd you think about the shit? I don't uh, Dimitron, Dimit, Dimitron. Fuck those little sail dudes in the caves. Uh, I I don't I don't know. I guess they were just dinosaurs. I like I said, I watch for the people trying to survive the dinosaurs, not for the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. so I, I see a dinosaur, I'm just like, oh, okay, you guys better run from it or kill it. Well, I guess and, I'll get to my point then. I got. I got tricked. <laughs> I, I when I first saw that scene, I I don't know. I think it's I think with my stupid eyes or whatever. I just assumed it was gonna be a Spinosaurus like thing, and I would have been so happy because I actually liked the Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park three. But it just turned out it was those little dudes. I'll take your word for it. I don't, I don't know what the names are of anything. Well, I forgot the names of those little dudes. The Spinosaurus is the big dinosaur that killed the T Rex in Jurassic Park three. Okay. The one, the one that looks like an alligator, All with right. legs, long legs. <laughs> Why do they give these guys such difficult names? I can't. We just call one breed dinosaurs Larry, one Steve, one Cody. You know, you know that's actually a complaint in the community. Why they give them so much so complex names? <laughs> It's true. The names are so dumb. Just give them something short. That's easy to remember. It look. Well, it's the Lyle. Well, to be well, to be fair, T Rex actually has a short name, Rex. Mm, it's long name Tyrannosaurus. That's way too long. I would forget that in a second. Well, it makes it easier to classify them in a list. You know, like species type, like like me and you, where we're considered Homo sapiens. I thought we were considered Connor and Cody. I don't know what kind. Uh, no, no, you're you're considered an alien. Oh yeah, it's true. Cody knows that I'm from another planet. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah. The final scene was cool, even though the Rex got its ass kicked again, just like it did in the first one. Well, it, it got it got back at the dinosaur. I mean, it got it. I got a few. It got it, it. stood a better chance than it did against the Indominus in the in the first one. But it had help with that, with the the guy with the claws. Mm -hmm. Asserted dominance. You know, it's surprising though. Like the, the dinosaurs with the claws didn't even they didn't even start fighting afterwards. Like, isn't that like a territorial type thing? Maybe they're just best buds. Oh, hey, Larry. Nice to meet you again. I need your help right? with this guy. When and where I got him. <laughs> but yeah. So since you're so focused on the actors, what would you think about their performance? I, everyone like got back into character really well. Like I was, I didn't know what to expect. I thought they were gonna give like people like Alan and Allie and Malcolm a little screen time, but I was very impressed that everyone got like as much screen time as Chris Pratt. Like, nobody got the super crap done. Nobody got too little. It was just really balanced. And they well, just stepped back into their roles really well. Yeah, it wasn't this... But it was... There's a reason for that. This was like a... Well, I'm going to use final in quotation marks. A send-off, right? A send-off for the series for now? Yeah, I think it was supposed to end everyone's story. So it, it was nice that everyone got their fair share of screen time and they all fit back in their roles really well which i was really impressed with and i i hope they end it here like we this is the best way to end it for me personally they shouldn't just bring this back just end it here see i'm i agree with you but we both know that's not going to happen give it like 15 10 20 years we're, we're gonna we're gonna see another one <laughs> well maybe but or like look or you know what they might do something different uh, there's a show called Camp Cretaceous, which is based off Jurassic World. You know the first one. 
the movie? Uh, it's, it's, it's an animated show, but it's based off dra- the movie, and it basically takes place during that the first movie. It's been going on for like three seasons now, I think. But apparently that's doing pretty well, so they could just do that, where they just do uh, stuff that expands the stories from different movies. Or just give it a Disney Plus series, make it all PG, move all the mm-hmm. gore parts. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that animated show, you know, everyone thought that was going to happen with that animated show where it was like, oh, you know, you know, this is going to be okay. People actually die in that animated show. Oh, that's pleasant. Yeah. There's just one guy who's just screaming while trying to shoot, trying to shoot a dinosaur. He just, get, he just gets wrecked. Got to carry so much incendiary shells. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, that actually would be a good idea with dinosaurs, incendiary mm-hmm. rounds. Just shoot those suckers and watch. Like, them. If it does, if it doesn't, if it doesn't kill them, it'll at least make them wa- back off because it stings. Right. Uh, so, so yeah, personally, I love this movie. Sure, it's not perfect, but I, but I'm okay with it. It had things I liked. Uh, in Cody's rating, I would give it like an eight out of ten. Yeah, I, I agree. I'd probably give it an eight out of ten as well. It's definitely yeah. for me. It's yeah. my favorite of the Jurassic World movies. Mm-hmm. A lot better than Fallen Kingdom for sure. Like, yeah, it, well, Fallen it wasn't was a mess. <laughs> it wasn't bad, but it was it wasn't like wow, you know. Fallen Kingdom was like four out of ten, maybe three. <laughs> okay, that's your scaling. Mine is mine is a little higher, about six. <laughs> okay, I'd make it a five point nine. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Hey, um, it's not like everyone's the same as us. Those other people have their own critiques, you know. Some people right. want it, some people want it to be a perfect movie. That's why there's mm-hmm. so many people who dislike this movie. I just they need to stop bringing back so many things that they just can't. I just, they just need to end it here. End the Jurassic series here, and don't ever bring it back. Like Back to the Future, they haven't touched that. They just left that how it is. That's how they yet. should leave this. No, Connor, you should epi- it's a yet. It's a never. They better never bring Back to the Future back. Ever. It's, I wonder how depressed good. you'll be if, like, tomorrow, all of a sudden, they're like, we're making a new Back to the Future movie. I was, I was like, super excited when they made Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, because I actually liked that one. When I found out they were making a fifth Indiana Jones, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. But Jurassic World just oh. needs to be the end. So you like Crystal Skull? Yeah. I thought it was okay. Like It wasn't bad, but it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. But I thought mm-hmm. it was okay. I just watched it for the action. Like I was eight years old, I think, when it came out. So I didn't care about the story and crap. I was just like, whoa, that's Indiana Jones, dude. Bro, the alien scene scared the shit out of me at the end. Really? When I was, well, because I watched it when it first came out, you know, and I was younger. I was younger than you when it first came out, and I wasn't scared. Bro, you gotta remember, dude. Um, I was exposed to a lot of horror movies and stuff growing up, so a crap ton of crap scared me growing up. Okay, all right. Which is ironic, because I still, I still, I still look look for those things now. All right, and you get scared more often than me when we play certain horror games. I know, and despite that, you still, you still, you still refuse to play a horror game. Hey, Phasmophobia is a horror game. Coward. You're the coward. You need to play The Last of Us. <laughs> One day. One day. Perhaps. Mm-hmm. All right. So. Thank you. That's done. Where? Uh, oh, did you know? Um. The Kingdom Hearts guy was actually actually very reluctant to put Sora in Smash Bros. Really? Yeah. Why? I think he was picky about what he wanted to add there. Like, what what abilities and stuff like that. Well, Sora's too OP to begin with. Like, he created all the Final Fantasy crap, and I'm pretty sure even he admits Sora's the most powerful one. Just because they made him, like, oh, okay, a male okay. Mary Sue. Yeah, I think I know. I I I read a bit more now. I, he was concerned about his character appearing in a spin-off title, like you know Smash Bros. Right. Uh, messing up the lore of his story, which is already oh. you know 
pretty pretty weird to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not like it's not like the Smash Bros lore would even affect it. It doesn't affect any other lore. Right. I think Nomura was just being Nomura. Uh, Nomura. He's being yeah. Him, yeah. Being himself. Well, either way it happened. He he could be mm -hmm. picky as he he could be as picky as he want now. It doesn't matter. It already happened. We right. got our people Sora and Smash. It. Yeah. Yep. People wanted it since like whenever they did dead started doing guests. Yeah, he was the most voted for the fighters ballot. Mm-hmm. Wow. Nintendo doing Nintendo things again, dude. <laughs> yep. I just I just saw this just now, but apparently they're they just uh they're going after covers now. <laughs> what? Yeah, this this guy who does Metroid Prime covers, like on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh Nintendo apparently was con uh, Nintendo's lawyers contacted him to ask him to remove nine of those videos that had Metro Prime music. Wow, I blame you for that. That's probably your fault. What do you mean my fault? You probably ratted them out, bruh. I don't Still, know, that's just... a, that's a shame though. Like. If they're gonna start going after covers, that's gonna suck because cover music is actually pretty nice. Like, if you want to hear a track in like a different style, like for example, say there's bit music that haven't hasn't been remastered yet. You want to listen in orchestra? Oh, sure, there's a cover for that now. You want to listen in metal? Sure, there's a cover for that now. Oh wait, right. not, it, it's it, you, they got sued. They can't you can't listen to it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like damn, I just want to listen to like uh, the first Pokemon theme in in like a heavy metal concert or something but i can't but i can't but they want to ensure that all the money for nintendo goes to nintendo not to anyone else they are so weird about about their copyrights you know mm, they are by far the most grievous of all the yeah. companies they're so weird about it because sometimes they're like oh we're f oh we're friendly with these guys we're gonna we're gonna be so net fuck them we're gonna destroy you in the words of Bully Maguire, this is what they want. I need that money. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. I think we can wrap up about now. Alright. Anything else you want to add or announce while we're here? Uh, I'm going to ensure that Cody watches all the Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes so that next week we can actually talk about it in full <laughs> detail. Um, but maybe other than that i don't have anything else to say yeah same old same old um majora's mask uploads will continue uh there might be a short or two maybe maybe we don't know yet yeah still deciding Mm-hmm. i guess we'll catch you guys next time yeah bye See ya.